Good morning, dear friends. This is Bishop Robert Barron of the Diocese of Winona, Rochester, and I welcome you to this televised liturgy. This is the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, When shall I rise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shadow. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, let your response be. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing praise to our God, for he is gracious. It is fitting to praise him. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem, the dispersed of Israel he gathers. Your response, praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He tells the number of the stars. He calls each by name. Praise the Lord, he heals the Great is the Lord and mighty in power. To his wisdom there is no limit. The Lord sustains the lowly, the wicked he casts to the ground. Praise the Lord, heals the broken heart. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast for an obligation has been imposed on me, 
and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regards to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told, her, told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him, said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages, that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. So we're told in the first reading today that Job says, uh, from the book of Job, is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He goes on about how desperate and sad and difficult things are. He says, I've been assigned months of misery and troubled nights have been allotted to me. It says, remember that at the end of it, remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. Ouch, right? How sad life can be. And we know this to be true in our own lives, that there are periods of sadness and uh, difficulty, tragedy, burdens that we've carried. Sometimes in our uh, later years in life, maybe the, if we're homebound or stuck in a difficult situation, Maybe we have sadness with our family. We can feel the weight of all that we've carried through life. We can feel the sort of sadness. And we can kind of get stuck there. But this is the exact reason the church chooses this reading today. It's to not leave us in drudgery. It's to not leave us in sadness. It's to not leave us hopeless. But rather, right away, the church proclaims this psalm. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. The Lord is good and gracious. He is merciful. How is he good and gracious? How is he merciful in the midst of our drudgery, in the midst of our sadness? It's that he comes right to us, right? This weekend, it's the first month of, week, weekend of February, right? In the midst of the most drudgerous month of a, of a calendar year in Minnesota, right? We, we carry the heaviness and the burdens of life at times. What does the Lord do but to come right to us and say, I am with you. I am with you. I'm with you always. I love you and I know you. And this is where he came to be with us. He came to teach us that he is not one who is far from us, but God took on human flesh. God unites himself to our humanity. So what does he do? 
right? He doesn't take away our burdens. He doesn't make everything okay all the time, but rather he is with us. This is the teaching of Jesus becoming God, becoming man, Jesus becoming fle- taking on flesh, that he takes on humanity, our human nature, and transforms it so that we can participate in God's life, the life of grace, where he gives his very self to us, his very presence. So this is our call, to welcome Jesus into the midst of our sadness, into the midst of life's drudgery, into the places where we feel maybe our children have left the faith and there's a real sadness around that. Maybe there's some burden that we carry, a a physical pain, or, or feeling debilitated, or lonely, isolated. That's the perfect place to acknowledge that before the Lord and to welcome him into our hearts in faith, saying, Lord, I trust in your promises. I trust in your grace to sustain me when life is full of trial and difficulty. In the gospel this weekend, we hear about Jesus entering the house of Simon, right, who is named Peter later on. And he enters in and goes right to his mother-in-law and raises her up and heals her. Jesus wants to give this grace of healing in our human hearts. He wants to transform our circumstances so that we know that he comes into our homes, right? It's it's a beautiful image for us as we celebrate a mass for those who are at home. Christ comes right into your home. He is with you. He is with you and loves you. And then, as it goes on, they bring to him all who are ill, all who are suffering, all who are possessed by demons, afflicted by the enemy, afflicted by all the ailments of this life. What happens? They bring those things to Jesus. Well, guess what? That's what we're called to do as Christians, to bring every illness, every trial, every difficulty, bring it to Jesus in the depths of faith and let him be present to it. Let him come to us and show us that he is the one who can save us. He's the one who wants to give grace to every human heart. And one of my favorite lines here, Jesus goes off to pray. Remember the importance of prayer here, the fundamental reality that every Christian must pray. Pray with faith to find Jesus. Everyone is looking for you. Everyone is looking for you. It's a beautiful point to think about. Everyone in this world is looking for Jesus, whether they realize it or not. No matter how far they seem to have gone astray, they're looking for fulfillment, happiness. They're looking for answers to life's purpose, life's meaning, and the future of their lives. Everyone is ultimately looking for Christ. And he is the one that can come to them to save them, to redeem them, to forgive them, and to heal their hearts so that they might know the love of God and know that his presence is what they truly long for. So he wants to come to them. He wants to go to the nearer towns and villages, going place to place, looking for those who are looking for him ultimately. Christ comes to us. He comes into our hearts through faith, but he comes to transform us by the gift of his grace, to take away not just the trials and drudgery of life, but to transform it so that his presence might lead us on the path to heaven. So we pray for that kind of faith today, to believe in the power and saving grace of Jesus Christ who comes to us, who enters our homes, who dwells with us in the depths of our souls, so that he might elevate us by the power of grace to lead us on the path to heaven. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the grace and mercy of Christ, we turn now to our Heavenly Father, offering our prayers of petition.
that the church may be continually healed in its human weaknesses, division and sinfulness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the world may be raised up beyond violence, pride and hatred. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are looking for the Lord Jesus may find him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may show active charity in visiting the sick and elderly in our neighborhood. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the healing grace of God may purify those who have died in our families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, hear these prayers. Help us to turn to you in faith and to believe in the redeeming power of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men, for he satisfies the thirsty soul, and the hungry he fills with good things.
let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for the Sunday's televised Mass. Hope it's brought you spiritual joy and comfort this day. If this Mass has helped you or someone you know, please consider sending a donation to the address on the screen or by visiting our website at dowr.org and clicking the weekly Mass icon. Thank you all, and God bless you. <laughs>